Welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition of Choir Boys Cutler. Now, 22 veterans a day commit suicide in this country. Now, I've been reading and trying to research um, and, and trying to get a little more factual on what's going on. Um, some people say it's 17 to 18 a day. Some people say it's 24 to 25. Listen, anything over zero is too many. We're going to stick with 22. Uh, that's what the movement's pushing towards now. Um, from what I understand today, the, the veteran suicide, and I think when you include military, active military suicide, uh, makes up about 14% of the suicide rate in this country. Dude, that's what, that's just, nobody should ever feel like they have to do it, or, and I hate that they do. Our focus is on vets, and we want to get that number to zero, and, and we want to start with just raising awareness, 22 veterans a day commit suicide in this country. So let's get that word out there. And and what you do is is you start that and you start a wave of awareness. And and again, I didn't start the movement, I'm not the founder of the movement, not the savior of the movement. I just want to be part of the movement. There's a lot of folks that are behind this, a lot of good folks. Southeastern Guide Dogs, Project Valhalla, um, the Firewatch Mission 22, all of these things. And those are ways that you can contribute if you want to. Uh, we've got no dog in the fight when it comes to any kind of charity. So if you want to help in that way, please do. Vets, we love you. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your service. Just know you fought for us. Let us fight for you. We back the blue on this channel. We support Leo's, our law enforcement officers. How do you do that, Scab? Well, you don't break the damn law pretty easy. And if you're an addict, please understand, never quit quitting that. Mr. Smith told me that. Uh, he had heard somebody say it, man, it just stuck with me. I love the phrase, I love the saying, never quit quitting. Now, for today's video, what we did, or what I did, was I took my spotter to work today. I still have the Raja, but I wanted to see uh, just how this carried, how this played out. This is the AUSA, uh, AUS 10A, I believe that's what it is, yeah, AUS 10A. Uh, Grippy G10, it's huge, but it, do, it doesn't carry bad. It's really kind of light. It's very much a slicer, slicey dicey, uh, exaggerated clip point, and I love the Espada. Let me say this before we get kind of into the cutting, and, and, and I didn't do a whole lot of tests, just got out playing around some. Um, is this practical? No. Is it fun? Yeah. Do you need it? No. Do I want it? Yeah. The thing that hit me today about cold steel is this, and I and we've talked about it. And I've seen all kind of responses on Lynn selling, and 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 um, I watched the video several times since he's put it out. And let me say this: uh, just a few minutes ago, I watched a new cold steel video. I think it was a twenty-five or thirty-second clip, and I don't know who the guy is. Uh, he said he represented cold steel and GSM, but wanted to know. And it's on YouTube if you want to look it up. He wanted to know what your favorite discontinued cold steel knife was. Favorite of all time. So that's showing to me maybe that they're gonna to try to do something that and get on get on you gotta get on that cold steel fanboy side if they want to make it work. Let me just say this and it's gonna be my last thoughts on the whole episode. I watched Lynn's video a couple of times. A couple of things stood out to me. Um, he said they promised to carry on his legacy. First thing I thought of was George Lucas and Star Wars when Disney bought it. Now, I watched the first three Star Wars when I was a kid. So that, whatever, I don't care what number they are, I do not do not give a damn about all that. I have i hadn't watched much anything else. I watch it on YouTube, I like that, and I keep up with it. Uh, I'm pretty well versed in it. I'm just saying I, I'm not that big of a nerd on it. My point is, they when somebody buys something, it's theirs. Let's equate it to the knife world. Um, Chris from Prepared Minds 101 had a knife he loved, the Jess X. Um, Schrade bought it, or I, Schrade designed it. Or, I'm sorry, manufactured. Chris designed it, Schrade made it a reality. Well, about the third or fourth round of it, they owned it. They did what they wanted to with it, and Chris took his name off of it. So my point to you is this. I don't know what they're going to do. I have no insider knowledge. I don't know. I'm going to keep an eye on it. As long as we get cold steel, um, I'm going to keep it. 
Uh, I just, I, I, they don't owe, once they pay you, they don't owe you nothing. So I, I you know, if they're, they're going to keep your legacy intact, intact, I hope they do. But uh, um, the other thing, and I mentioned this the other day, was, was the whole forgiveness thing. That was odd to me. And somebody had mentioned in the comments that maybe over him trying to trademark saying my, maybe it was. I, I just, again, that's just kind of, and if he's looking, listen, if he's sincerely and earnestly saying, hey, if I offended you, man, more power to the guy, okay? My guy uh, over at Jimmy Slash Josh <laughs> said it's like watching one of those hostage videos, and, and, and that was the vibe. He's reading a, 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 a pre-written statement, and I agree with that. I, You know, so I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know why he sold it. I can tell you this. This is the United States for 40 years. And I've heard people say, oh, he did. He just proves he's about the dollar. Name somebody that's not, dude. Please, please, please. Name one knife maker that's in it because they, and they all love knives. They're all passionate about it. But let me explain something to you. Every blade design that ever will be made has been made. You can thicken it up. You can play with the wedge. You could, but there is no new design of a blade. You can play with handle material. You can play with thickness. You can do all of that. Okay? Um, but it's a get off of that. Oh, he sold it because he made money. Yeah, yeah, because the guy selling D2 knives for $600 does it. He, he's not worried about money. Yet. He shouldn't be. Good God, he can sell two or three knives a month and be fine. Enough of that. He sold it because it's his right to sell it if he wants to sell it. I think a lot of us, and, and son, now, y'all call, I, I've been called a fanboy, and I, I kind of, okay. But now, son, there are some boys on here who, whoo, son, they tore up about this thing. Listen to me. Enjoy. Uh, backyard Samurai said, hey, everything changes, and he's right. And we'll miss, I will miss Cold Steel. Here's why. I think I did a I did a long, long video. And like I said, this will be my last kind of video on it. Unless somebody pisses me off. Cold Steel is fun. It's just fun. It's been fun. Okay? So, that aspect of it lends energy, whether you like the dude or not, the crazy-ass knives, all of that. It's just fun. And 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 then my down in the dumps, look, I got I got almost eighty pieces of cold steel. I got Swiss halberds, I got uh Scottish broadswords of eighteen ninety six cavalry saber that weighed about twelve or seventeen ninety six. Good God don't let me misquote something on cold steel. That weighed about eight thousand pounds. I got a gross messer floating around here somewhere. I've got literally I think a thousand dollars in tomahawks from cold steel. So I, I've got a ton of cold steel and I want cold steel to continue because it's fun. But if it does not, I wish everybody involved the best. The last thing that, that kind of stuck out to me about the video, maybe you guys can explain it because I, I listen, when I say I like knives, I love them, love them. When I say I don't drink Kool-Aid, I'm not kidding. I don't, I don't know people over there. I'm not going to act like I do. I don't research the company. I, I just don't care that much about any company. I care about D-Bad's company, Twisted Mr. or Mr. Twister. See, I don't, but because I like Donnie a lot, because, you know, he's helped me so much. And I, I really am hoping they do well. But to know the dynamic, I mean, the, the, the relationship, Donnie and the knife maker, that's none of my business. And, and I don't, and I sure don't know nothing about Cold Steel. But the thing that stuck out to me, uh, the third thing was he mentioned Demco a bunch, so much so that, it, and I know, I know uh, Andrew's a big part of Cold Steel Tradlock. I know all that, but I mean he really, really mentioned it. So that stuck out to me a lot, a lot, almost like they were, you know, partners. And, that, and I'm not saying they were again. I don't know. Don't and let me fanboys. This ain't your, your mama's knife channel now. I don't need to be corrected in any statements I'm saying up front. I don't know this stuff. I'm just saying three things that stuck out to me were 
the first statement, he felt like they would continue his legacy. That's going to be a, a big thing to watch. And again, I think Star Wars, George Lucas, and Disney, right off the rip. The whole forgiveness thing. To me, that's a man setting his house in order. And and and, and I love Lynn. I always say in Lynn we trust. So I hope that's not it. I hope he's okay. Um, I hope he enjoys the money. And the third thing was how much he mentioned Demco. And I, I've always known Andrew was a big part. But I guess didn't realize how much. So my, my last thoughts are these. To everybody that works at Cold Steel. To everybody. Man, I wish y'all the best. Thank you for 40 years of fun. I hope we carry it on because I'm, I'm going to continue to buy it. Now, when when they start coming out with the, you know, and changing the steels and doing all that, I'm out. If we start going everything to crap, I'm out. I'm gone. You can buy that at Walmart. So, I, you know, but if they want to go, they want to go. I'm, I'm a little skeptical, but I'm willing. I'm always one of those that's just willing to hope. So I hope it works out. I don't think it will. I hope it does for my sake. Again, I worry about me. So back to this and the end of my little rant. We did a few tests, about five, ten minutes worth. I just wanted to have some fun with y'all. Seen some slashing I did yesterday. This thing is a heck of a slasher. Now, is it a cutter? Yeah. I wouldn't call it a chopper. You can, and I did. But this thing is more of a slicer. It's a lot of fun. And again, is it practical? No. But can you make it work? Yeah. So listen, I love y'all. God bless y'all. Remember, tomorrow, Tuesday, the 8th. I believe that's it. Yeah, the 8th, Tuesday, tomorrow. 6 o'clock, the, 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 the chance to get in stops for the D-Bad D-Guard Preacher. I'm sorry, D-Bad D-Guard buoy, And... For the war sickle, I am waiting on it to come in from Donnie. Six o'clock tomorrow, it stops. We'll write everybody's name down. We're going to do the random.org. Best way to do it. Good luck to everybody, but you got till to six o'clock tomorrow to comment on the video. Comment. I think the video title is comment for the GAW. Go to that video. Hit like. And you put 22 a day, whoever comments on that video, unless you specifically say you don't want to be in the drawing, will be entered in. So good luck to all you guys. I love all you guys. I'm going to turn it over to myself to do some testing with this thing. God bless y'all. I think I've said that five times. I'm scared. You ain't. This part and myself are going to eat supper. Enjoy the show. Well, thank you, Scab. Mighty fine ramble there. You're just rambling on and on. Now, here we go. I got the Espada. I'm out doing some trimming here. About broke my leg here with that leg, paying no attention at all. Now, here's where the Espada, look at the reach on that. Good old Scab reaching out there. It's kind of a lazy man swing there. Now, those are the hated vines, the hated Florida vines that I hate so much. And this crap had to be moved. All right, here we go. Here's one of the thicker vines. Look at this bottom. Buried it pretty good. Now let's see what it does right here. In twain, son. Clearly in twain. Now, again, we're kind of clearing out. I had to get in there and get some, uh, look at that. Huge knife. Love it. Had to get in there and get to some utilities. So this stuff had to go. Now watch here, son. This, this is perfect. This is a perfect slashing cutting type knife I, is it built for chopping yeah you could do some with it it's a thinner blade i just i like it for this right here now these vines it went straight through son no problem whatsoever none at all cut them up i think there's a couple more in there it, these are just good this is a good test and i'll tell you why these vines are a good test for night because usually they're pretty rubbery in twain son and they bounce a lot. So this will give you, if your knife isn't right, if you're not sharp, uh, it just, it, it, it'll bounce right off of there. This spot, I had no problem with it. We cut all kind of thickness of vines and then right here, just did a little shaving with it. Glided right through there. 
Now, I mentioned earlier, is it practical? I, for most people, no. I, I enjoy it. Again, very blessed to be in a job where I can carry something of this size and it not be an issue. There we go. And it, that's a huge knife, so and, and the handles being all that. I just, I like the knife. You know, would I recommend it? I'd have, you know, you gotta, you gotta, again, there's some more vines and some great film work by Old Scabbo. Now, do I recommend it? I, you know, I think if you're a cold steel fan, or if you just like to bang around in the woods or something like that, yeah, go ahead and get you one. Like I said, I'm going to get the nicer one, but I felt like this would give me a good idea of uh, of the feel and the, the size of the knife. Now, I know the different materials. The other one's probably a little heavier. This one is surprisingly light for this large of a knife. But every task it did there, just cut some of that nylon rope. Every task that I asked it to perform, it performed and performed it well. I cut that bottle so fast, son, you couldn't even see it. Like, like, light speed. Right through here. Now, here's the tree net, or uh, Christmas tree had this wrapped all over it. And I'll tell you how much fun that was getting that off. Big time air. Got caught all in the racks on anyway. It was just pain in the butt. Now, right here, laid it out. A little chopping, right there in twainage. Could you do everyday tasks with this knife? Yep. You really could. Um, I will say this. Now, this right here coming up, this right here coming up, uh, I did some slicing. Y'all see it peel right off of there. This was an old piece of Comcast coax cable I found, but it's perfect for testing on. Um, this is the tracer wire that I'm stripping off here in case we had to hook to something. Like I said, this was just about a five-foot piece. Um, it's perfect for what I did today. Now, I did chop this thing in half. It did do a little bit of edge damage to the knife. I don't want to lie to you there. Um, I used I, I used a little bit um, and got it out. Got some of the chips out. Not bad, but I, I was I can't say I'm disappointed because this has a big copper wire in it, and I chopped it with a knife. So I, you know you can anticipate if you do something stupid, you know. Do something, you know, dumb tests will get you dumb results. But I will say this, the Espada cut right through it. Didn't have any problem. Here it comes right here. The the brilliance of scab. See that good bite it got? It bit that blade too, son. Did it ruin it? No. I got it right out. But I'm just saying, you want to be careful doing stuff like this. This is why old scabber does it for you. So you can go, hmm, I don't think I'll cut a Comcast coax cable with my Espada. I watched Scab do it, and that was pretty stupid. But, again, it, it still coming in there and did the job. Now, this is something that we do a lot. We do strip wire back um, so we can hook to it and run a signal down it. Overall, my overall thoughts on the knife. I like big knives. That's just me. Now, right here, we it glided right through this bottle. I love them. I showed y'all, uh, I've showed y'all every knife I got. I like, cool, it, again, it's fun. You know, am I invested in the company? Am I tore up out all this? No, I, listen, love cold steel. That's why I got so many pieces of it, but I got a lot of other knives. When I say, do I recommend this knife? I recommend if you are a collector or if you're a guy like me, I spend a lot of time out in the woods anyway. So I like having something that I can play with. Here's the Donnie B all day drop test. Perform magnificently in the D-bad test. There we go. Pretty well balanced. I'm telling y'all, overall, this is a great knife. Here's my dumbass dogs. Uh, I'm sure a squirrel farted somewhere in the neighborhood, and there they go. Listen, if y'all want a knife to have fun with on a property, i tell you the hardest thing. I know some of y'all live in states where you can't carry these, and that's just... Thank God for Florida. I know we're messed up, but I can carry whatever. Well, listen, guys, I love y'all. God bless y'all. I'm scab. You're not. We gone.